So welcome back to another Inventor tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to take our Stuart platform that we did the motion constraints on in the last tutorial and using Inventor Studio, create a full animation of the entire movement of the Stuart platform. So let's jump on in and see where we end up. So as you can see, I've preloaded the Stuart platform from the previous uh, tutorial. Uh, we've got all our relationships uh, that we've done for this platform, plus all the sub-assemblies. And all the sub-assemblies are flexible so that they uh, move, can move in independent. And then we've uh, grounded the bottom and the top can move independent depending on the uh, sub-assemblies and the angle relationships that we set up in the previous um, in the previous tutorial. So now what we need to do is create a full animation showing the whole movement of all the different things, um, all the different constraints. So over here in the top uh, on the top bar, we've got a, a button called the environments button, um, and in there is our inventor. Studio. So we will select environments and then you can see our environments, uh, our inventor studio is the is this one uh, roughly in the middle of the, the new icons at the top. And we're just going to left click on that and it will load us into this new uh, environment, inventor studio. Um, first thing we want to do when we get here is uh, create an animation timeline. So we'll click on the animation timeline. Um, it might give you an, uh, uh, an animation commands are not active in the model state. You must activate uh, an animation to use animation commands. We'll just click OK. Um, and then we've got this animation timeline here and currently it's collapsed down to its smallest form. If I zoom in at the end here, we've got this little button here. Um, which will then make it much bigger and easier to use. Um, so, we're, and it's actually uh, named expand action editor. So we'll expand the action editor and you can see we've got um, our animation timeline for our assembly number 10 or whatever you've saved uh, your file as. So you'll see that all of our um, relationships have gone and we've got different things here, lights and cameras and stuff like that. We're not going to worry about that too much. We're just going to look at uh, driving multiple uh, relationships. All the relationships we need are contained within each of the sub-assemblies. Um, and so we're going to have to go through the sub-assemblies, picking out all of the angle constraints and setting our uh, animation around those. Now to do that, what we're going to do is we'll open up subassembly one. We'll come over and click constraint within our animate section. Uh, we will get this little pop up here and we will uh, select our first angle constraint to animate. Uh, for me, this is angle four. Um, and we'll just go around um, checking the direction that it goes and then we'll come back and create a larger um, sort of angle so, uh, so that uh, we can see what's going on. If we go straight off too big, the likelihood is that the, um, uh, the animation will collapse on itself and it will become a bit of an issue. So I'll do minus 170 um, and we will start at zero duration, we'll end at 10 seconds, which will automatically change our duration to 10 seconds and we'll click OK. Um, and you can already see it's done uh, something a bit ridiculous. Um, so we'll just bring it back to zero and we'll just play it. There's a play animation button here on our animation timeline. Um, and yeah, it's going the wrong way the wrong way for what we want. So I'm going to select on the timeline that the animation bar, I'm going to right click 
and then select edit and then we'll get this animation constraint back up again so minus uh, i was that was maybe minus 170 we actually wanted to go slightly further the other way so it need, we'll try uh, minus 190 click ok and yeah now you can see it's gone up 10 degrees which is the way we want it to go which is brilliant um, and we're going to get go and do that for all of our constraints now. So we'll get rid of subassembly one in the tree and open up subassembly two. We will uh, in the animate, we'll animate a constraint, the angle. Um, and we will change that to minus 170. It's already set up for 10 seconds. We'll click OK. And it's already put it below it. Um, and you can see it's also moved uh, up slightly, which is exactly what we want. So we'll move on to the next subassembly, subassembly three. Do exactly the same. Um, constrain, animate constraint of uh, that subassembly. Uh, we'll change that to 190. Click OK. That's moved up. Ideal. Um, so we'll just keep on going round, doing this all round. Uh, so we've done uh, subassembly one, two, and three. We're now on subassembly four. This one will be below. So that one's that one over there. So we'll do subassembly five now. And animate the angle again change it to minus 190 so that's pull which one is that one's pulled that one down so we need to just double check which one we've got now in the timeline you have multiples of the same object uh, so each of the sub assemblies has got its own bar we're not worried about these we can just edit them in this uh, bottom animation section so which one would that be uh, so an angle six is fine is it angle five Let's have a look, right click on it, edit. Let's have a look, let's go a bit 160 just out of interest. It seems to be pulling them all down for some reason. We'll do the other ones and we'll come back and we'll edit them to make sure that they're all right. So we've done subassembly one, two, three, four, five. We've got subassembly six to do. Constraint. Subassembly six, angle one. We'll set that to uh, minus uh, one ninety. Click OK. So we can drag the timeline backwards, and it should move all of them. So all we now need to work out is which one is going, which ones are going up and down. So if I drag it to the end of the timeline and then come over and ho hover over the angles, so that's that angle. So it's not subassembly six that's the problem. Subassembly five angle six looks like it's going the wrong way. So we'll find that angle six here. Right click on it, edit and we'll change that to 170 uh, click ok and then we'll find the other one that's going the wrong way looks like this one here yeah so angle 5 we'll edit angle 5 in our timeline and we'll change that to uh, 190 looks okay So we've got another one here that's go it seems to be going the wrong way. So we'll find that one. So 
subassembly 6, 190, so that's uh, angle 1. We'll edit that one and we'll send that one 170. Okay, so it looks like they're all going up slightly, which is ideal. Uh, if we now um, play our timeline, so reset back to the start and then play, we'll see the all move up evenly. Quite slowly, but they are doing it. And we'll stop it when we get to the end. And now what we'll do is we'll go through them individually and set in the maximum throw uh, that we can for that particular angle. So right click edit. Now I'm already aware that it's 110, minus 110 degrees one way and uh, 230 minus 230 the other way. So um, and that was just through a bit of practice and trial just to see how far I could go before the whole thing went a bit crazy and wanted to flip over on itself so we'll go through all of them uh, amending them to uh, either minus uh, 110 or minus 230 depending on which way was uh, the positive direction so minus 110 230 minus 230 this one will be minus 110 so it all looks good we can slide back to the uh, start of the timeline we'll play it and they should all move up relatively evenly to show that they all come together and it can move vertically upwards. Now what we want to do is we want to have them all moving slightly different uh, ways to show the full sort of a movement of the actual Stuart platform. Now instead of just going back and redoing the same uh, animate constraint, um, we can actually set these so that if we just uh, right click on each of them and mirror them then you get the full up and back down motion um, because in a minute we will then move them to a random part of the timeline so I'll just mirror all of them and the timeline goes out uh, this timeline goes out to 30 seconds so we can actually then just click and drag these to random positions wherever we want them, which will then show help to show a sort of full random movement of the Stuart platform. Uh, which will help demonstrate what we've got. Just move that one out a little bit. So if we now go and reset our playhead back to the start and then we will loop it so we'll toggle repeat and we'll play the animation we should now start to see the whole of the Stuart platform moving in a sort of randomized way. And when it gets all back to zero then obviously it will loop back the playhead and just start again um, and go again. So that's our basic introduction to our animation timeline. There's a lot more you can do with this, um, but it's, uh, it's quite useful to so that you can drive multiple um, timelines at, or sorry, multi multiple relationships at once to show full movement. So thanks uh, for, for watching this uh, tutorial um, and don't forget to come back for another tutorial or another Inventor tutorial soon.